Hello everyone, today I'll show you how we can import this um, Babylon JS playground scene into a React.js and then convert that into a website for Web3 solution. So let's get started. First thing first, we want to open up Visual Studio Code. In Visual Studio Code, um, I've already set up the project. So all you have to do, if you want to follow along, you can just go to my GitHub and you'll be able to download this. Um, basically, all you have to do after that is just uh, npm install and um, let that run and you'll be able to do whatever I'm doing currently. So um, first thing first, I'll show you guys the structure of the file. So starting off in the React main component, the app, right? So in here, we're just loading the viewer, the FPS. Don't worry about that. That's nothing. So in the viewer, um, we can see that um, we are trying to render a scene with all the components we see above, right? So in our scene is basically just the environment and the this is just all the objects you see and the player model, okay? So if we have a look at the scene itself, basically you're just giving it all the attributes you want, the gravity, how much you uh, the fog, etc., etc., and also um, the ability to resize the window. Um, you see, right now it's able to resize, but that's in the Babylon Playground, so we're just a um, enabling that into our WebJS uh, React project. Sorry. Um, and then looking back at the viewer, so there's a bunch of uh, information. So basically, it just tells you the camera. So if it's in first person or third person, uh, the third person has been disabled for the time being. Um, but um, it just shows you that you can change the camera um, as well as um, the animation. Um, the current cursor. So right now, if you want to input keys, it's actually with WASD is how you move and if you uh, click shift you go you have a little boost and when you click spacebar you start jumping or more like flying so yeah uh, that's basically the mechanics um, and then is there anything else for you guys or interesting um, also actually the boxes so all the box is basically off of one model so we're just taking one box we're creating it 15 right so we're creating a 15 by 15 box uh, we're giving it a light uh, material and whatnot and then we're creating an instance a thin instance and we're just creating all those um, boxes into a 3d space like this gives you the jet the random placement in the space and then you just do the math and it just gives you all of this and it's super fast running like that and yeah um, I can also show you running it on the actual react so um, if you want to start running it onto the um, and react project himself instead of using the Babylon playground you just have to do npm start give it a few seconds and it will load the app for you so if we have a look there you go you have your your playground inside your react project which is pretty cool so and a cool thing about this is you have the same functionality as when you're in the playground where um if you're if you wanted to you could just um change let's say the amount of ball you want to uh, no sorry not ball sphere sphere boxes you want to display on the scene you can just customize that real quick you just save that and it'll be able to just um, display that right away without having to click anything else which is pretty cool um, and there you go there's your scene with 2,000 boxes, which is pretty cool. Alrighty, so now moving on, how do we get this React project onto a Web3 solution? So for today, we're just gonna be using Unstoppable Domain. They have a pretty good solution and they um, have a very simple integration procedure. So let's get going. So first thing first, um, we want to um, make sure our project 
gets onto GitHub. So we're gonna initialize the project, um, stage all the commits, and then we're just gonna say sandbox creation, let's just say. Publish, we're gonna publish it to a public, okay, repo. And then it's publishing, and we can even open it on the web. There you go. There we have our GitHub repo. So now, after that, we go on to Unstoppable Domain. We need to get a domain where we want to host. So uh, basically, um, they have a bunch of websites. You just whatever name you want. I'm just going to use my name, right? So if you want to get one, you just click, you add to cart. There you go. Uh, and then you can check out. Okay, and there you go. You can see the different uh, options to pay with. Just wanted to show you the page real quick. I've already bought some, so I'm just gonna go over to the domains I currently own. And we're just gonna be going with the charlesbreton.x. So, first thing first, I haven't even minted for you guys, just to show you the procedure. So, basically, free mint means you're just registering your NFT, which is the domain, as being yours using your crypto wallet so let's go with procedure you might understand a bit better uh, please understand that i'm not expecting you to understand all of this please read more about crypto and whatnot because there's a lot going on so let's go over this so continue uh, we're gonna choose our wallet so we're gonna go with i believe uh that one i'm just gonna double check i believe it's this one because it's already the domains i already have two so you are sure that this domain is getting to this, assigning to this wallet, right? Um, and then you're just confirming that simple uh, email verification. I'll do that in my other window real quick. Okay, there you go. Okay. Um, so this is it's gonna take a few minutes to do and we'll be back once this has been completed. Okay guys, the minting has completed, so we can now have access to our charlesbreton.x domain. So let's go have a look at that. Um, so first page you can see is just profile, so you can have a profile, the name, general information, and all your socials. Um, the second one is the crypto coins you want to accept. Um, basically people can send using your charlesbreton.x instead of using your 0x blah blah blah. It's a lot more simple and easier to use and they accept it by a lot of applications so far and more to come. And then uh, what we're going to be working with the rest of the video is this, the website section. So there's three options you can choose from. The first one is basically you just create using one of their template they've designed beforehand. It's really simple. I've done it in the past. I believe if we go to Charles Bretton crypto you'll be able to see one of their templates it's just a simple coming coming soon you know but they have a few of those and then uh, they also have two different options over here which all use IPFS if you guys are not familiar with IPFS it's basically a peer-to-peer -peer hypermedia protocol basically it aims to surpass HTML it's used to make it times faster it's just explaining how right now we're wasting a lot of data for no reason with how or the system is currently centralized and it's just using a peer-to-peer -to, -peer to just make things more consistent and future-proof basically uh, i'll put a link in the description to this uh, link. If you want to read more about it, go for it. Going back to it, um, basically this one is using um, your direct file storage and this one is just using a link. So today we're just going to use uh, the link. So how we're going to do this, we're just going to um, also use Fleek on top of all of this. Um, really simple though. So we're just going to connect our GitHub prior that we did, right? And then once we are connected, 
we are able to add a new website to our IPFS uh, hosting, right? So we connect our GitHub, uh, this one, and choose the re repository we want. We choose the choose the hosting. There's a there's two right now. There might be more in the future. Um, we're just gonna go with IPFS. And then we're going to continue. It already recognized we're using React, so we can just deploy it. And then we're going to give it a few minutes to just deploy in the background. And we'll be back right after. Okay, guys. So the website has finished publishing. So now we can actually have a look at it if we wanted to. There it is. So there's actually a URL like this if you wanted to go to a website, but because we have domain dot uh, charlesbretton.x, which is way better, um, we're able to just go to overview and then we're able to see the hash for our current um, website, basically. And then we're just able to redirect that hash to our website, basically. And then we just have to sign it um, in our wallet just to ensure that it's actually us doing this permission, right? Um, connecting. There we go. Okay, you should get a pop up telling you to sign the transaction basically. And then give it some more time before this finish loading, and then we'll be right back. Okay, everyone. The transaction has finally completed, as you can see. Uh, we're now able to actually go see the website, but um, before you can actually see it, you have to install an extension on your browser, current browser. Most current browsers don't accept it. Uh, you might be lucky with the Brave browser, but if you don't, you're that's okay. Um, just go to Google extensions, right? I also have a link in the description for you guys make it simple um, but basically you just want to get unstoppable domain accession um, it's just because currently with the web 2 um, they can only resolve DNS um, URLs and they don't accept those URLs yet uh, maybe in the future we'll see only time can tell but basically you just have to add this extension and then you'll be able to access any of those URLs so um, now we can just go to charlesbretton.x right click it and then um, it will redirect to where it's supposed to um, sadly it does not just show your charlesbretton.x when it loads but that's the only bummer oh well at least it's really easy to access um, and there you go. That's how this is a tutorial on how to do a Babylon scene in React and deploy it on a Web3. Hope you learned something today, and I'll catch you the next time. Bye bye.